What if I told you that the nuclear weapons we know from history are just the tip of the iceberg? The bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki were devastating. But today's nuclear weapons are hundreds, even thousands of times more powerful. We live in a world where, with the push of a button, entire cities can be wiped off the map in seconds. But how big are these weapons, really? How do they compare to the ones used in World War II? And what would actually happen if they were used today? In this video, we'll show you the true scale of modern nuclear weapons. From history's deadliest explosions to the terrifying reality of today's arsenals. Stay with us until the end, because understanding this isn't just fascinating, it could change the way you see the world forever. The story of nuclear weapons begins in the final, desperate days of World War II. In 1945, the United States tested the first atomic bomb in the New Mexico desert. It was called the Trinity Test, the moment when humanity first unleashed the power of the atom. Just weeks later, that power was used in war. On August 6, 1945, the bomb known as Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. It had a yield of around 15 kilotons, equivalent to 15,000 tons of TNT. In an instant, the city was devastated. Over 70,000 people were killed immediately and tens of thousands more would die from radiation and injuries. Three days later, a second bomb, Fat Man, with a yield of 21 kilotons, hit Nagasaki. The destruction was catastrophic. For the first time in history, humans had created weapons capable of erasing entire cities. But as terrifying as those bombs were, they were only the beginning. The end of World War II didn't mean the end of nuclear weapons. In fact, it was just the start of a global arms race that would define the 20th century. The United States and the Soviet Union began developing more powerful, more advanced nuclear bombs. In 1949, the Soviet Union tested its first atomic weapon. The world had officially entered the nuclear age. By the 1950s, both nations had moved beyond simple atomic bombs. They developed thermonuclear weapons, also known as hydrogen bombs. Weapons capable of producing explosions measured not in kilotons, but in megaton ranges. For comparison, the Hiroshima bomb, 15 kilotons. Early hydrogen bombs, up to a thousand times more powerful. The goal wasn't just to have a bomb. It was to have the biggest, the most destructive, the ultimate deterrent. And this competition would lead to the largest explosion the world has ever seen. On October 30th, 1961, the Soviet Union detonated a bomb so powerful, it defied imagination. It was called the Tsar Bomba, the king of bombs. The yield? 50 megatons of TNT. That's over 3,000 times more powerful than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. The fireball alone was almost eight kilometers wide. The shockwave shattered windows over 900 kilometers away. The mushroom cloud reached 60 kilometers into the atmosphere higher than commercial airplanes fly. Had Tsar Bomba been dropped on a major city, the devastation would have been absolute. Entire metropolitan areas, gone in seconds. And the terrifying part? That wasn't even its full potential. The original design was for a 100 megaton bomb, but even the Soviets thought that was excessive. But even as the world moved away from building bombs of that sheer size, the technology only became more advanced and more dangerous. Today, nuclear weapons have evolved. They're not just about raw explosive power. They're about precision, speed, and the ability to strike anywhere on the planet within minutes. Let's talk numbers. The United States, Russia, China, France, the UK, and several other nations all possess nuclear weapons. Together, there are roughly 12,500 nuclear warheads in existence today. Many of these warheads are designed for deployment on ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles. These missiles can travel over 12,000 kilometers, reaching their targets in under 30 minutes. 
But it doesn't stop there. Modern missiles often carry MIRVs, multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles. In simple terms, one missile can carry several nuclear warheads, each aimed at a different target. For example, the American W-88 warhead, 475 kilotons. The Russian RS-28 Sarmat, known in the West as Satan II, can carry up to 10 large warheads or 15 smaller ones, each capable of destroying a city. And nuclear weapons aren't just launched from land. Stealth bombers, submarines, and even mobile launchers ensure that even if a country is attacked first, it can retaliate. It's called mutually assured destruction, and it means a full-scale nuclear war would leave no real winners. Numbers like kilotons and megatons can feel abstract. So let's make it real. What actually happens when a modern nuclear weapon detonates over a major city? Imagine a 100 kiloton nuclear bomb, smaller than many modern warheads, but still devastating. Let's say it explodes over central Paris, London, or New York City. Within 1.5 kilometers, everything is vaporized. Buildings, cars, people, gone in an instant. Up to five kilometers, the shockwave levels most structures, causing massive casualties. Out to 10 kilometers, fires break out, glass shatters, and radiation burns affect anyone exposed. Beyond that, radioactive fallout spreads, depending on wind patterns, poisoning air, soil, and water. Now, imagine not just one, but dozens, even hundreds, of these warheads detonating across the globe within minutes. The immediate death toll would be in the tens of millions. Hospitals would be overwhelmed. Infrastructure would collapse. And the long-term consequences? Far, far worse. A nuclear explosion is just the beginning. The real nightmare continues long after the blast. Radioactive fallout, tiny, deadly particles, would rain down over vast areas. It contaminates the air, the water, the soil. It causes radiation sickness, cancer, birth defects, and it can make entire regions uninhabitable for decades. In 1986, the Chernobyl disaster, just a nuclear reactor accident, not even a weapon, rendered parts of Ukraine and Belarus unsafe to live in to this day. Now imagine that, multiplied across dozens of major cities worldwide. But there's more. A large-scale nuclear exchange could trigger what scientists call nuclear winter. Massive fires would pump smoke and soot into the atmosphere, blocking sunlight. Global temperatures could drop by several degrees. Crops would fail. Famine would spread. And billions of people could face starvation, even those far from the initial blasts. It wouldn't be the end of humanity, but it could be the end of civilization as we know it. Nuclear winter isn't science fiction. It's one of the most serious threats ever modeled by scientists. Even a limited nuclear war, for example between India and Pakistan, could be enough to send hundreds of millions of tons of smoke into the upper atmosphere. In this scenario, global temperatures could drop by 2 to 5 degrees Celsius. Growing seasons would collapse. Food production could fall by up to 90% in some regions. Over 2 billion people could face famine, and that's without a full-scale global exchange between major nuclear powers like the United States, Russia, or China. The terrifying truth? A few dozen warheads could trigger global disaster. Hundreds or thousands could end organized society altogether. The true scale of nuclear weapons isn't just about destruction zones on a map. It's about the survival of life itself. Every year, scientists from the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists update the Doomsday Clock, a symbolic clock showing how close humanity is to global catastrophe. In recent years, the clock has been set to just 90 seconds to midnight, the closest it's ever been. The reasons? The modernization of nuclear arsenals, growing tensions between global powers, the risk of miscalculation or accidental launch, 
It's not just political leaders who hold the future in their hands. It's all of us, through awareness, education, and pressure for responsible policies. We're closer to the brink than most people realize, but we're not past the point of no return, yet. For the first time in history, humanity has created weapons capable of ending civilization. But we've also created the opportunity to prevent that. Understanding the true scale of modern nuclear weapons isn't about fear, it's about responsibility. The more we know, the more we can push for peace, diplomacy, and survival. If this video made you rethink the reality of nuclear weapons, share it. Because the greatest danger is ignorance. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay informed, and let's hope these weapons never leave the pages of history.